And we have just discussed the formation of a eutectic structure in a eutectic system. Uh, that type of structure is only formed uh, at one specific point in the system, that is the eutectic composition. Uh, if we want to look in the, in the whole eutectic system and study how different structures are formed, uh, we can choose some, some uh, typically or some in principle different compositions. So that, that's what we want to do now. We want to look at three different uh, compositions in your eutectic system and follow how the structure is formed. Uh, at the same time, we, we will see that we are actually discussing what is happening during solidification uh, and how the microstructure is formed during solidification on different alloys. And uh, now we focus on the left side of the phase diagram, on the phase diagram for lead and tin. And we see it here, and uh, uh, here we see the 100% the, the lead, and here on this axis we have the composition of tin. And we see here the solid, solubility lines for, for tin in lead and high temperatures at, and at low temperature. And now we're going to see what will happen when we have an alloy with, it, with this composition along this line. It's about 2% uh, tin in lead, and we start up here in the melt. Which we, in which we have dissolved this 2% of tin. And then we start to lower the temperature. And when we reach this point, the liquidus line, we will start to solidify a lead-rich phase, solid lead. You see the, the yellow figures here. As long as we are in this two-phase region, which is a very short period, a short interval at this specific composition, I mean, we are just passing by this two-phase region up here. Uh, as long as we are here, we will have both phases. That is, we will have both liquid and the alpha phase, as it looks in this picture. And as we pass by the, the interval, the alpha phase is growing. And when we come down here to the solidus line, the solubility line, uh, if you follow the phase diagram, all, all material has gone from liquid to a solid. And here we'll have only alpha phase. And in that alpha phase, 2% uh, of tin is uh, dissolved. So then when we continue down here, nothing will happen. Uh, we, we will go all the way down to the room temperature and end up with an alpha phase with 2% tin dissolved. Now we will go to a composition with a higher tin content. We are looking at this composition, about 15% tin, uh, in a lead-tin alloy, uh, the C2 composition, and we have this line that shows us uh, where we are in the phase diagram. And again, we start in the liquid, where we can mix the two components together in a, in a, in a melt. Uh, they are totally mixable at this temperature. Then we start uh, decreasing the temperature. Uh, and when we reach this liquidus line, we start to precip precipitate uh, lead particles or lead uh, solid. So when we come down here for a while we have a structure looking like this. Uh, solid uh, lead or, sol or alpha phase as it's called here uh, and the rest is, will, will be liquid. Uh, and when we are at the point somewhere here where the level rules tells us that the, these two uh, parts of, of the tie line here are more or less equal then we will have about 50% of solid and 50% of liquid. But then when we continue further down, we get more and more solid. Uh, and when we are approaching the solidus line, we have nearly only solid. And when we pass this line, we get a, a pure uh, alpha phase, like this. Like we had before when we were here. We are in this one phase region. But now we have an alpha phase but with, uh, which has dissolved up to 15% tin. In, in the lead matrix. So during this interval we have only one phase. But now we see here when we pass by this solubility line, we come into the two-phase region alpha plus beta uh, and uh, when we go down here we will also precipitate beta phase. Uh, and uh, what we see that uh, this part of, of the whole distance in the level rule from here all the way to the pure beta phase 
this will always be relatively short in, in compared to the total distance, which means that the amount of beta phase all the way here will be relatively small. Roughly we can say in a way that it is about 15% at the most uh, at the bottom here. Uh, and this beta phase will pre precipitate uh, some kind of particles or uh, it might also most, most likely also precipitate in the, in the grain boundaries. There is a schematic drawing here with some um, lines uh, as a symbol for the beta phase, but they are also supp supposed to be lie here in the grain boundaries. Uh, this type of phase diagram is the diagram where you have a solubility line that are bending off rather strongly can be used for precipitation hardening. These particles that are precipitating here in, in, during this process can, can harden the material, especially, especially if you do this in a, spe in a specific way, which we will come to later. But uh, as I said before, we want to have very small particles and many particles, and then there are different tricks to make that. But if you only are cooling down the material like this slowly and following the phase diagram, the particles will going to grow already here and they will grow rather, rather large. So that is not the real way to, to make a good precipitation hardening. But still, uh, we end up here at this position, at this composition, um, with a material that basically has a matrix of, of alpha phase but there are beta phase particles precipitated in the green boundaries and some, some you know, and in some places in the matrix also. Now we go to an even higher concentration of tin in a lead tin alloy. Uh, the composition now will be 40% tin and that is uh, shown by this line in the system here. And uh, as before, we will start up here in the liquid and follow the sequence what happens when we go down to room temperature. So in the liquid we can, we can form a melt uh, and solve the two components in each other. One component, uh, one phase liquid. Uh, and then we go down, uh, come to the liquid as line, start to form some solid uh, alpha phase, uh, that is uh, a lead rich phase. Uh, they will most nor normally grow as, as a round or, or dendritic shapes, which we'll co come into later. But, but in a way, we, we form some solid in the beginning. We go down through the two-phase region uh, and get more and more solid. And all the time we can follow how much solid we have by using the lever rule. And when we come down here, we're rather close to the eutectic temperature. We are here and we can roughly say that this line is of the, of the same order of magnitude as that line. It means that we are about 50% solid and 50% liquid. But now what has happened during this period? Well, all the time the solid has this composition, follows this line, and the liquid uh, are going to follow this line. And more and more tin is accumulated into the liquid. So it means that when we are down here, uh, just before we, we come down to the eutectic temperature, we will have a, a liquid that has a composition close to the eutectic point. Uh, and what happens now when we pass this line? Well, if you look at the structure just below here, we come into this two-phase region, solid-solid two-phase region. It means that here we only will have solid alpha and solid beta. Just before the line, we had 50% liquid with this composition, 50% uh, solid with that composition. So the liquid here is going to solidify to eutectic structure. So we're going to get the structure looking like this uh, schematically. We will have the solid that has been pre precipitated before. We call it primary precipitated solid. And these uh, brown areas, and they have roughly a composition of 18% uh, tin. Uh, found here, uh, and uh, the rest of the structure will be eutectic. Uh, it's symbolized here by this uh, lamella structure with uh, alternating lamella of lead and, and tin. So this is the final structure, and when and we continue to go down to room temperature, nothing is happening. We end up with this type of, of final structure. That is, uh, about half, half of the structure will be eutectic, and half of the structure has been primarily precipitated lead. 
Now we will go over to a more um, uh, realistic case and look at real microstructures in a similar type of system as we have just discussed. And we will look at the system aluminium silicon. So this is 100% aluminium, there you have 100% silicon. And here we see we have this type of eutectic system. And we're going to look at the same pictures and the same movie as we looked at when we started to discuss microscopy. But now we have some better background, so now we can follow what, how, how this structure really has formed. Uh, the composition is about 7 to 8 percent, <coughs> and in this system, this point is about 12 percent, that point is about 1.6 percent, means that uh, in our alloy, that will be somewhere here. And then we will see that uh, when it solidifies, we start in the liquid, and then we start to precip precipitate the aluminium phase, aluminium rich phase here, uh, it will grow. And just before your tactic point, we will have slightly above 50% uh, solid aluminium phase. And then the rest will form a eutectic structure. So now let's look at that structure. Here we see a realistic movie of how, to, how it is to look into the microscope on this structure. And first we focus and then we move around a little bit to get an overview. We can also see the pores we discussed before. But now we will look closer to the structure. Here we see the two features of this structure. Uh, we see the, the light face here, which is aluminium face. And we see the little bit darker areas here, which are the eutectic areas. What we especially see here is the shape of this uh, aluminium face. It's called a dendritic structure. And it's very typical for a primary precipitation of a metallic alloy. And uh, these uh, dendrites, as we call them, they have been growing in the two-phase area uh, while the temperature was between the liquidus temperature and the eutectic temperature. Then these phases was growing. Uh, at that time, these areas in between was liquid. But then when we reached the eutectic temperature, these areas solidified into a eutectic structure, which we will look closer to further on. Uh, we will say stuff a little bit with the dendritic structure. Uh, here we see uh, kind of a stem. Dendrite needs, means actually a tree in Greece. So that means that, that um, uh, we have a stem here and then we have some secondary arms. It looks like a tree then. And here you can imagine one stem and it's growing out. And maybe they have some other stem here with some in another layer. Because we have to remember that we are looking at the a two-dimensional cut through the material. If we would see these dendrites in, in three dimensions, we would see that they are stems, and all those stems' uh, arms are growing out in, in four directions. But now we continue to, to increase the magnification. Now here we increase the magnification, and then we have to focus somewhat. You see here in the structure just above these uh, pores, we are moving up away from pores a bit. And there we increase the magnification again, and then we have to focus again to see. And now we are beginning to see the eutectic structure a little bit better. We need some more focus only. Uh, we have to move around to find a good spot to look at. And now I think we have found a good area and we focus here and let's go on. We stop here for a while and look a little bit closer to the structure at this higher magnification. What we see here is the dendrite we discussed before. That is, this is the aluminium phase growing uh, in the two-phase region before you, the eutectic reaction. And here we see the eutectic structure in this system. Uh, now we don't have really clear lam uh, a clear lamellar structure as we had, for instance, in the in the lead tin system. Here, the, the silicon phase tend to grow with, with plates, uh, and sometimes also there are some fibers in, in these regions. Uh, here we can see some larger silicon plates, but but roughly we see anyway a, a cooperative structure with uh, gray silicon plates or silicon pieces of face and a matrix around, which is uh, the aluminium face. Uh, so this is what we typically will see in, in the aluminium silicon eutectic uh, structure. Now we have discussed the structure formation in a simple bi binary eutectic system. We ha actually have discussed two different systems, both the lead-tin system and the aluminium silicon system.
We have looked at some different compositions and looked how the solidification sequence has been and how different phases has been formed at different places in the phase diagram. Uh, before we leave this area, we're going to look at a simple example and use this knowledge together with the knowledge about the level rule 